All right, guys, we are back again for another analysis video up in the top plane. This time over on the Korean server, we're taking a look at Varus King, who has been popping off recently playing AP Varus top. Not something I'm super familiar with, especially in the top lane. You might see it a bit in mid, but it's pretty bold picking it top lane. And he's been absolutely killing it in about Grandmaster, almost challenger elo right now. And some of the one shots that you can get with this pick are absolutely insane, especially when you might be coming up against a few more tanks at the moment. This build will absolutely shred them late game. So without further ado, let's hop into game. Let's see how he's gonna do up against a tricky matchup in Renekton. And yeah, let's just take a look at some of these combos because the damage is crazy. So let's jump into it. All right guys, so jumping straight into game. Got the runes on the screen. Typically he's taking these exact same setup into pretty much everything. The only thing that I have seen change will be the um, bone plating for second wind into those poke heavy matchups. But into things like Renekton, the bone plating, it makes a massive difference because you know, their, their sort of kill windows are gonna be all ins. So if you can negate a lot of that pressure early through bone plating before you get to things like your tabbies, it's gonna be huge. So let's see how we play this. So gonna be looking to get the pro, which should be a fairly easy thing to do into this range versus melee situation. Getting the autos in when we can, but main priority is just securing the level two first. Taking the autos now that we've got the shove going on and we walk up, gonna get the Q. And look at that damage. Like, this is level 1. And bear in mind, this is an AP Varus setup. Most of your damage is coming from proccing these Blight stacks on your W. Which is why we'll be maxing that first. But, as you can see, level 2. Maximum charge on the Q to proc all 3. And that's a lot of damage. That's like, basically 200 damage at level 2. Pretty risk-free. All you got to do is get those three autos in. He takes PTA as well. So you get the um, extra damage from proccing PTA before you do this. So even better. And another little thing about Varus, because I know he's not the most popular pick in the top lane. If you take a look at his cooldowns here. So you see, when you proc the W stacks, your basic abilities get a portion of their cooldown refunded. Just something to be in mind because Varus does have quite big cooldowns. So focusing on of Renekton actually walking up here. We're going to flash auto Renekton. I don't know what he was thinking there. Guess so Renekton looks like he's playing for level 2 but the minion didn't die with the Q and that is a freebie and now flash advantage for Varus so again into this matchup the flash going to be extremely valuable on the Renekton to get those sort of flash W combos or initiations it's not much of a combo flash W but as we saw the Xiao Chao Meng, I think it was game that we did when he was playing Renekton into Nasus. As you can see in, in that example, I think Renekton level 2 just instantly flashing power Ws. As we might get killed here, Renekton actually backs off a little too soon. Probably thought he had the damage to kill him there. As we get a nice bit of poke, but going to have to respect the fact that the enemy jungle could be here. Again, a big thing to pay attention to when you're playing these sort of champs um, where you want to be playing them super aggressive. Don't forget that junglers do exist. Don't fall for like a, a 330 gank every game because you're shoved at their tower. Be mindful of it. Just check at the start of the game where they're going to leash. I like to get early vision on the enemy topside buff. But that's because I play quite mobile champions like Riven. Um... Varus, you're probably not going to want to do that. We'll just pay attention about their bot lane and make an inference based on when they get to lane. 
about what side of the map their junglers started. As uh, so Renekton's gone for the double Doran setup. Let me go back to lane here. Do have the barrier as well. Which into Renekton's going to be a bit tricky. His Empowered W will shred straight through that. So have to pay attention to how we're using that. As again, standard combo. It's nothing crazy. You get your three autos and look for that Q immediately. Pair it with your W as you're charging your Q. Gets you a bit of bonus damage on that. Again, doesn't always have to be three stacks. Right there, you just got an auto and an E. Also going to proc the Blight stacks. And Lee Sin looking for a nice little lane gank. <clears throat> so we clear out the pink. We're getting to get this in. I wonder if it's going to be a dive. Renekton going in. And I think it's just going to die. Look at that. Like, it's just so unexpected. And again, he's not even built AP at this point. This is just like a lot of the time you're rushing recurve bow just to help get those stacks. But that's three stacks into an E. And again, three stacks, instant Q. You don't need to fully charge it all the time. Most of your damage is, again, coming from those Blight stacks getting propped. So don't feel like you have to get the max damage out of your Q. If you can, brilliant. We'll probably see later in the game your ult will synergize quite nicely with your Q. So you can ult someone and immediately start charging your Q. And by the time you've got the max charge, three stacks would have been applied. Through the ult and oh actually whiff with the ult there this is kind of a greedy run but we do have loose in nearby again massive poke we're maxing q second by the way and again if you're going to be playing this you do have to play it aggressively um for example into renekton if you give the renekton a chance to get max rage as LeBlanc goes in here, we're probably falling down to this. Do have the barrier, but elect not to pop it. But yeah, like I say, you do have to be playing this aggressively. Um, there's no point playing this super passive. Something like a Renekton, if they get maximum rage, because you just let them hit the wave uncontested, you're going to have problems. They're going to flash on top of you, empower W. Um, and it's not going to be good. So immediately, from level 1, Switch on, don't autopilot, and get that wave shove in. Get the pro, punish every CS they walk up for, auto. As Renekton looking to try and zone the Varus. Not a terrible idea. But again, disrespecting the jungle matchup. There's one auto on a Q or an E. Take him out there. E's are often a lot easier to hit with a wider hitbox, so you don't need the damage from Q. Get that E out there. And also, <coughs> in terms of priority, so because of the cooldown refund that I mentioned earlier when you proc your Blight stacks, you usually want to open with Q into these sort of extended fights. Then get your three autos again, use E, and then your Q will almost be off cooldown for another one. So that way you manage to get two Qs off. As uh, so Renekton's going to go in here. We do have ult. We also have barrier and flash. We're going to ult him. WQ. Renekton fail. Flashes it. Watch that one more time. So Renekton's going in. We stay calm. Auto in to help get those stacks a bit quicker. But again, just absolutely one shot. In. And again, we still don't have any A. Well, we've got Amp Tome. But this is Recurve Bow into Tabby. So he does take the tier 2 boots into these harder matchups. Makes a lot of sense, especially when you're up against the Kazix as well. Who, by the way, is still absolutely broken. Good looking for a jungler to pick up. Give him a go. <clears throat> as we are going to start to work towards the Nashers. A 
lot of the builds you're going to see are pretty heavy into ability haste. Again, your ult late game is on a super low cooldown. Um, and the amount of picks you can make with it, like the, the range on it, I think people disrespect a lot. Um, so you can make a, a lot of picks around these objectives. And even if the enemies do build things like um, Edge of Night, like you've got a lot of tools to proc that. So you can sort of charge up a Q if you're out of vision. As they walk into you, let that Q go instantly, pop the ult. Because again, damage is coming from the bright, Blight procs. They can throw your E in with big chunks late game, as I'm sure we'll see. But already 4 and 1 as we could freeze this. I think we might, given that Kha'Zix was topside. They give it a little bit of respect, but we do have ult, so... I wonder if we... Because we could use it just to poke him out a bit. I mean, Renekton does have a fair bit of sustain when he can get to the wave, but... When you're in these sorts of positions, you can always opt to ult for damage. Because that way they can't then walk up to the wave. It stops them from getting a lot of rage and therefore sustain. And like I say, the cooldown, even in the early game, is not massive. Double auto E, nice little poke. <coughs> Renekton does have the red buff as well, but... Let's see, we've got the wave pushing away from us now. We are going to need to walk up. I'm not sure where we're going here. As we are giving massive respect to Kha'Zix at this point. Still waiting for him to show on the map. And this is the main difference that we're probably going to notice between the Korean VODs and the uh, Chinese Super Server VODs. In Korea and other non-Super Server servers. People are de definitely a lot more aware of jungle matchups and their lane in phase respects that and reflects that. Um, whereas in Korea, like we saw, obviously massively ahead in the 1v1 but doesn't want to throw it away just because of greed in. Especially when we knew Kha'Zix was topside fairly recently. We're going to get the recall off. Do we have enough for Nashes? I wouldn't have thought so just yet, but we're probably qu pretty close. Maybe after this wave. But again, for shoving the wave, try and get a few autos on different minions. Then send a Q or an E through it, rather than focusing on one minion at a time. And this is where this pick shines. Shoving enemies in. Backing up this PTA and the Blight. And then getting these massive QWs. Like, look at that. Oh, straight into the ult. Burning the Renekton ult there. Let's take another quick look. So, get the stacks into the WQ. Instantly pop the ult. That was really, really nice. And Nasus having to... Uh, I keep calling him Nasus. Renekton has to defensively ult there. And we still have flash and barrier, but pretty um, so probably going to be looking for the recall. Could look for some juicy fruit. Because Renekton could, as we see, they uh, TP back and hard shove this in, so we might miss it a little bit. But not much we could do there. We could go and look for, for the honey fruit, but if it wasn't there, then we're in an even worse spot. So, got the Nashes, got a pink ward. Gonna be working towards Riftmaker. Just helps even more with the tank shreddage. These one shots. I'm not sure what Renekton's gonna be building this game, but it just seems like nothing you build, defensively anyway, is gonna help you much against the late game Varus. I almost feel like just going more damage. Just try and kill him in the first place. 
Alright, Nash is a pretty big power spike. These autos, even without the procs, now are going to be doing a bit more damage. Again, we shove pretty fast. <clears throat> and take towers pretty quick. Varus passive gives him attack speed as we flash away. Is that a lot of CC though? Yeah, we're not going to be able to survive that. As we get taken down. But as I was saying, the Varus passive is pretty good for taking towers. When you kill an enemy unit, gives you temporary attack speed. A pretty decent chunk as well, to be fair. It helps you shred these towers. Jump ahead a bit, but I think we're going to lose this tower. <clears throat> so a pretty close game overall. The rest of his team not doing so hot, so... I say, as Botlane looks like they're about to get some kills. Going to be a two for one. There's a LeBlanc out of there. No idea. We get back to top. Renekton now does have Merc Treads. And again, we've seen this in just about every other video. When you've got downtime, feel free to take enemy or your own jungler's top camps if they're not nearby. Ideally, the enemy junglers, but you got to play a bit selfish in solo queue. Get, get these resources. And on the Varus, once you do hit that second item power spike, that's when you really start to take off. As I'm sure we'll see some monster one-shots towards the end of this game. It is a bit of a cheesy pick, but I've spent today playing a lot of games. I think I've played like 10 games of this today, and it's pretty fun. Um, haven't pulled it out in solo queue, but been playing some flex with the boys and yeah late game the potential of this is crazy and it feels like with the the amount of cdr that you build in the items as well as the cdr refund like you are just constantly firing out these q's and e's and if you hit a q on a three stack target they just literally melt like butter and itemization is pretty good and go um, Zonyas or Banshees or both after the core two items, um, which is what I've been doing mostly. As we're going for the, the dive here, we pop the barrier, we're going to take both of them down there. Looked a bit sketchy, I wasn't sure we were going to be able to pull that off, so we get some autos off, we ult the Renekton, he stuns us, but our E is already through the air. And he's going to get taken down to tower. And then again, a couple autos on the Kha'Zix. WQ and he's gone. It's just the, the disrespect. I think it's also because it's not a common pick, you know. So you're going to be able to surprise a lot of enemies. Like the amount of times in these games where I kind of have been autopiloting. I've been, you know, shoving in the wave early. And those 3 minutes 30 ganks. Come on up. And like they see the autos. They're not doing that much. They're getting tickled. And then they just overcommit. And then that WQ takes them out. So I wonder if more people start playing this. I doubt they will though, to be fair. It's a it's a very niche pick. This guy's making it work in GM Challenger in Korea, so. You're looking for something new to pick up, especially against these tanks. Maybe Varus Top is the one. I don't know. Are there more standard picks that are decent into tanks? Sure, but I don't think there's anything quite as satisfying as getting these one shots. Camille's pretty nice at the moment with Triforce, to be fair. Did enjoy playing a game of her the other day. As we are just waiting for the wave to come in. And let's see. Again, 12 to 9. Pretty close game. Alright. 
Do I'm on red buff? Alt is available. Just gonna look for the Q snipe on red and we pick it up. Very nice. Again, we've hit this two item power spike. Looking for these skirmishes. <coughs> and let's see what we can do here. Lee Sin and Fiddle both have a little flank on. That's gonna be a pretty nasty combo. Varus and Fiddle. Taking it chill for now. Very cover in the mid wave. Renekton and Shaman top, so we're going to have to go back and catch that at some point. What do you guys think of this new buff, Sharon, by the way? In the new patch? Ivan on every champ now. I think it's pretty cool. I think it probably helps with griefing a little bit as well. Like late game when ADCs desperately want that red buff and maybe their jungle is pissed off or whatever. They want to take it away, so just a small little quality of life change. I saw Ivan got some buffs to compensate for it. Wholesome tree. Again, we're not committing to the split push. We don't have TP. I've seen a lot of people other than Varus King do take TP. Um, he seems to be pretty happy with the cleanse or barrier. But I do think he's a decent split pusher, to be fair. Obviously, there's a lot of matchups where it's going to be tricky. You know, into something like a Camille um, or an Olaf. I think Olaf is going to be your standard ban for this pick. Everything that champion is will just absolutely shit on you as Varus as we're going to walk up. Eating a lot of CC, flashing away with the ult. I wish that Q had hit because there's a chance that that Q would have killed him. Maximum stacks with W as well on that Q. I genuinely think that would have killed. But we get outplayed. We disrespect the the fog of war there. Man, I'm a I'm absolutely gagging for it. I need to see one of these one shots. I tell you what, it's the most frustrating thing you'll ever experience though when you've got one of these one shots lined up. You're charging that Q. And just as you're about to release it, like a Janna Q comes over the wall, knocks you up, you get silenced, and it's soul destroying. Because you know that feeling, you've got your endorphins already start pumping, and they just get stripped from you. Awful feeling as we run towards the bot lane to catch this wave. Dragon's up as well, might look for a fight around it. Again, our ults already back up. Uh, seems like we're working towards the Banshees fail this game. Pretty solid pick. Helps with the LeBlanc assassin. And his team seems to get that under control. We're on soul point now. Infernal as well, that'd be juicy. See here, look to proc the proc the uh, edge of night, like I was saying. A lot of enemies are going to respond with this when they can. So Q to proc it, proc it, get those autos in. Drops an ult just to be safe, but I think I probably had that just with the autos in the E. And I don't know if this is the first time you guys are seeing this, but I think... Um, for me, Lol Dobby, if you guys aren't familiar with, is an amazing YouTube channel. You should go check it out if you don't already know of it. Um, follows a lot of what's going on on the Korean server. And does these great videos on these sort of niche picks or when new champions are released, how the pros are doing with them. Really, really inform informative stuff. And yeah, he recently did one on Varus King. Would recommend you check it out if you haven't already. But figured it would be an interesting thing to jump into a full game. 
and take a look at how the, the laning phase goes against something like a Renekton. But again, just pure aggression from the get-go. Don't give him a chance to get that rage up. Pressure towers. With the bone plate in and the tabby rush into certain matchups, like you can survive all ends quite easily. And yeah, people just disrespect the damage because they're not used to it. So take advantage of that. And bear in mind, this is like challenger level lobbies in Korea. If you're in something like gold or silver, like people are not going to have a clue about AP Varus damage numbers. And they'll probably rush Ninja Tabby, Armor, as we take these fights. I'm going to focus the Nash first. As LeBlanc goes in, but we've got some MR now, so I get to survive that. Again, I want to see these big picks. There's got to be some. But yeah, like I'm saying, guys. The lower the elo, the more value you're going to get out of picking these off-meta picks. Obviously, there needs to be some the, some foundation into why they're being picked. Don't just go picking any old thing, but... People are not going to be aware. They're firstly going to think that you're going AD. They'll build stuff like tabbies, and it's just not the way to itemize against this pick. If you come against this... Definitely Rush Tenacity, in my opinion. Merc Tread's going to be helping out a ton. In your runes as well. If you can decipher from Champ Select that it is Varus Top. Um, maybe double Tenacity runes. Because big thing about Varus is the level 6. Getting free Blight stacks and a free Max Charge Q. So if you can deny that, that'd be great. Go into the enemy jungle. <clears throat> Again, no massive downtime. Take the jungle camps while you're here. Alt is available. Flash and barrier two. Again, you win a lot of 1v1s, so split pushing isn't out of the question on this pick, but... Of course, your ult is probably going to shine in these teamfight situations. You don't know the route spreads across the enemies as a fight does break out. We look for the ult. We do whiff it. We get a max range, max range Q anyway. The Blanc's going to walk up. We're going to flash on the Cogmore here and instantly pop him. Is Kazuk's going to be next. We get the Q... Oh, the E. The Kazakhs actually sidesteps that. So let's take a look at it. We decide we've got the red buff. Going to flash instantly WQ. Again, you don't need to charge it for the full duration. Red buff on the Kazakhs. And look at that Q. Like, this Kazakhs isn't even that, you know, far behind. I know he's a squishy champ, but still. It's a nasty Everfrost. Red buff going to tick away on the LeBlanc there. As what's the cooldown? We've got 20 seconds on ult. Dragon's coming up. Ideally, you want to be looking for a reset. But we have red buff ticking for the health. Wouldn't be the end of world if you didn't, but... Probably got an item completed. As we see Kazakhs. wonder if we're going to look for an ult pick. Ari manages to get, and there we go, just like that. Ari manages to proc the Edge of Night. And then max range ult, instantly channel the Q, and he's done. Like, the damage you deal is, is from such a safe range as well. So if you have good peel on your team, it's an even better pick. But even without it. The, uh, the self sort of pill that you've got with your ult and the slow on your E. Pretty nasty. Plus the itemization, the fact that you can now go Zonyas, you can have Banshees. So you're not as easy to kill as you might think, paired with the barrier. Like, 
pretty hard to get down. We run it down mid. Probably going to be the next tower of choice. Okay, and we haven't had to use the barrier too much this game. I think it's a decent pick into Renekton. Maybe even an exhaust into something like Kazakh's Renekton. But don't be afraid to take TP. As Fiddle's going to get caught out here. We do have ult now. So let's see if we can catch anyone out. LeBlanc's going to be a bit tricky. Cogmore walks up. And oh, the Q just goes wide again. And the E. We're forced to pop barrier here. Cogmore still has... Damn, I was hoping... So Cogmore still had the stacks on. I was hoping we might get the turn. But they just run out. Again, I feel like I'm being teased. With these Qs. Because he's... Uh, this Cogmore... Cos Cogmore's movement's pretty, pretty decent. It's dodged a couple of one shots. Let's skip ahead a little bit. All right. So we've got Baron coming up. Surely, surely we're going to see a one shot here. What we got? We got Banshees. Wonder what we'll be going last item. Maybe just a decap. <clears throat> Although a decent amount of MR on the enemy team, Void Staff, probably the better pick. The Blanc as well. Okay, we get the ult off. Milio is such a pain in the ass, though. Every time. Bailing out this pick. So we get a couple autos in. There's the Q. We pop the GA. That was one auto and an E on the Cogmore there. So again, one, two. Two autos and a QW, one auto and an E. Absolutely one shot in. And a bit of CC as well with the slow. Very nice. Milio is a pretty good pick into this. She's playing it well. A lot of missed, um, missed opportunities for these one shots because of that ult. I say, we might be able to catch the Renekton off guard here with an ult. They probably think it's down still. We're going to get a nice little bit of poke off. And we bait out the LeBlanc. We've got a Zonia's there. Nice from the Ari there. So you can do these nice little baits. So let's watch that again. So Siege in the tower. Tank in the tower shot. LeBlanc goes in. Pretty predictable path. We kill her before Zonia's in. And again, we're just too tanky. With the Zonyas and the Tabby, buys us just enough time, the Ari, to get involved, take him out. Really, really nice. Didn't even flash. And Kog'Maw's here with the Milio. Again, it's going to be tricky with these two. She needs to just do pure autos as we go in. And you see what I mean? Like, the aggression. So we, we already know from this point, we can't just engage with Oh, We don't even have it right now, but it's hard on Cogmore Milio. But we turn in, we get the third auto into a WQ. And again, Milio's Q knocking us just out of range. But you can see the potential of this. And this is like best case scenario for Cogmore, you know? If he had a sweet pop, pop the barrier to take the tower shot. This is best case scenario. Like, Milio is like the perfect pick as a support into Varus. Into AP Varus, that is. Um, but yeah, any other pick. I mean, you could even consider it as a ban, but I do think Olaf is just going to be more of a problem. You want to get ahead early on this. But the damage coming out from those procs, man, is. And this Cogmore's got wit's end. Um, again, in your if you are in lower elo, um, 
Itemization is definitely not a strong point for a lot of players. So very rarely are they going to be getting MR at all. So just think, these one shots that you're seeing now, like the damage here is probably going to be even more so in your own games. So again, recognizing that you do have the Banshees and the Zonias and the Barrier. Like you are a lot tankier than you might feel when you first start playing this champ. So allows you to make those sort of aggressive baits. And opponents, again, will not respect your ult cooldown. It is up so frequently. You can use it. You can probably get it off. A couple of times in these super long fights but enemies will not think that i guarantee that leblanc that went in did not think it was back up already and she paid the price as we're trying to wait for <coughs> elder soul elder dragon So let's see how we play this. So we've got Edge of Night on Kha'Zix and Banshees. Lee Sin gets a lovely kick. And we're just going to instantly ult. And Q him. Don't give him any chance. And again, that's all it takes. If you have any other engage, it doesn't have to be a Lee Sin insect. Literally, if they just step up a little bit too far. Throw out that ult instantly get your Q charge in and in a lot of cases that's going to be enough to kill so we've got LeBlanc and Kazix on the flank we're going to dodge out the slow we're going to Q to get rid of that edge knight I wonder no we're going to wait for the Renekton absolutely one shot him so again getting the autos in staying patient QW and we'll pick up the Milio as well. And that is going to be GG. 15, 4, and 6. And he did go Death Gap for that last item. But as you can see, this pick does a shit ton of damage. And it's not just against squishies either. You come up against tanks, you will shred them too. Um, your W... Like the and your blight passive i think scales off of both missing health the active i think scales off missing health you can correct me if i'm wrong active health and the passive blight when you expunge them works on maximum health so execute and just just shredding tanks and squishies alike so yeah if you're sick and tired of coming up against these Cassantes and the orns and all this nonsense in the top lane Maybe give Varus a pick. You know, I've been playing him a lot today, like I say. He's a lot of fun. Still got to work on some of the fundamentals. But um, yeah, if you do pick him, let me know how it goes. But this has been a fun one to review. Um, let me know if you enjoyed this sort of gameplay. Rather than sort of these super Chinese... Super Chi I can't speak. Super server Chinese players. Um, I think it's a bit different. But... I thought it'd be fun to do, so let me know if you enjoyed. But I think tomorrow I'll be back with a, another Zhao Chao Meng video. So um, stick around, subscribe if you want notifications for that. But yeah, hope you enjoy, guys, and I will catch you in the next one. Peace.